This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. <laughs> I wanted to discuss certain topics that are very important for our life. Many of us were trying to connect ourselves to the Creator and we're finding it very, very hard. And when we're trying to go to consult, to talk, to hear from wise people, from righteous people, so we hear from them on the greatness of the Creator, how how wonderful Hashem is, how great Hashem is, and it's true, we believe in that. But we, we still find it very hard to, to make this knowledge part of our lives because of the sorrow and the pain and the difficulty and the challenges that we're experiencing in our lives. And even though that we hear that the Creator is so great and so amazing and so fantastic, when those vessels that you try to hold with all of your power are breaking to pieces, when even the small amounts of confidence and security that you achieved until now suddenly melting and disappearing from your fingers, between your fingers, you find it very, very hard to believe in the greatness and the goodness of the Creator. And we don't want to lose that, because we do believe in that, or at least we want to believe in that with all of our power. And we remember that in certain times, in certain moments of our lives, we really experience that glory, that beauty, that pleasant feeling of having a Creator by your side, feeling that our prayers are being answered and thinking, that's it. Our only way from now and on is up and here we finding ourselves falling and failing and falling on our faces and dealing with very hard experiences, humiliations and destructions in our emotional lives, in our, in our daily, daily basis we're dealing with difficulties. So, I wanted to explain something about this darkness that is, uh, that is covering the world and I wanted to present a point that is very important, I think, for, for our understanding. Darkness. <laughs> that was the topic. <laughs> you think you can run away from Hashem? You cannot run away from Hashem. Hashem will come with you <laughs> to the depths of your fears. I spoke few days ago with a friend of us and uh, and I told her that when I see that the Creator is interfering in my life like that he did right now that you're talking about darkness and then he turns off the light for an example so usually people will say oh it's a sign I need to pay attention I need to think what does it mean I was just talking about darkness and then darkness came I don't do that I don't do that I'm I'm trying to find the deeper message than the details of that experience and I think that the main message was Hashem is here Hashem is with me. Now, what he meant to say, 
what was the message, what was the reason. That's minor compared to that deep understanding that Hashem is with me. Now, first of all, if Hashem is with me, I'm relaxed. I can pray for to have a million dollars and then to find a penny on the ground or, or a quarter and to say to myself, okay, yes, I saw it's a miracle. I just ask Hashem to give me money and here I found a dollar bill. I found something. It's not what I asked for, but I cannot ignore from the fact. I'm not, not every minute I find a dollar bill. So <laughs> I just found it after asking for a million. Hashem is with me. That's the main message. First of all, Hashem is with me. That's what I'm reminding myself when I'm experiencing those wonders, the supervision of the Creator of my life, in my life. So, there is something very, very deep in judging the Creator favorably, trying to understand that the Creator, He is with us in the creation. We are here on a mission, on a journey, and we're finding it very, very hard to walk alone on earth, to go to meetings, to, to go to, to deal with, with our deep relationships with our relatives, with our beloved ones, and to take a stand and to share and to say our opinion. We're finding it very, very hard because we're always scared, we're always worried what's going to happen, What's going to be the next move? What the other person going to do? How he going to react? What will take place? And many of our life experiences are there to, to bring a life evident that really life can be very scary. That some people can humiliate you. They can scream at you. They can disgrace you. They can break your self-esteem. They can take things from you in force. There is a story on Rabbi Baruch from Mejibuj that one time he was walking in the street and he saw an adult, an old person that was standing in the street and he was crying. <coughs> so Rabbi Baruch came to him and asked him, what happened? Why are you crying? So that person told him, my friend and I we were playing hide and seek and I was hiding and I found a very good place to hide. And after a few minutes, long minutes, that my friends were looking for me, they gave up on me. And they just walked away. And after, after a few more minutes, I realized that no one is looking for me anymore. And I just went out and realized that I'm all alone here. And I was very, very hurt by the fact that my friends just left me and went without me. So Rabbi Baruch started to cry as well. So that person asked him, why are you crying? So Rabbi Baruch answered to him, that's exactly what that happened with Hashem. Hashem hide his face from us for a moment and we forgot about him completely. We just walked away. And Hashem Barach is sitting in that hidden place of his, Bamistarim Tivken Afshi, and he's sitting and crying because of the arrogance of his people, because that his people just, okay, Hashem, you chose to hide from us, okay, so we're going to manage without you. It's very easy for us to blame Hashem on what that we're going through in life, on the hard hours, on the difficulties, on the crisis that we're going through, on our fears, and it's very easy to blame him, and also we have the proofs, the evidence for that. Hashem can help me. Hashem doesn't help me because He doesn't want. So it means that He doesn't love me, that He doesn't care about me, He doesn't listen to my prayers. Hashem is busy. Oh, Hashem is listening to their prayers. I saw Hashem is going with that righteous man. So if Hashem he cares about them and He doesn't care about my prayers, maybe I'm not important. Then you're justifying your sadness and your depression instead of really checking reality of what goes on in your life. But the Creator, and that's my understanding. This is how that I see things. This is my life experience. That's the knowledge that that been revealed to me from my uh, search after the truth and after the real 
will of the Creator. I saw that the Creator was always very nice to me. I saw that many times the Creator answered my prayers. And even in the early beginning of my journey of finding the truth and finding myself, I was experiencing miracles in levels that I'm sure that even big righteous people and very, very holy people would be very, very jealous and, and, and envious to have miracles like I experienced in the beginning of my journey. Before I was keeping Shabbat, I was thinking about things and people would come and say those things to me and I would look at them and sing Hashem. I was praying on things, I would just want to, uh, to achieve certain things and those things would just jump into my silver plate. Hashem was doing everything for me just to open my eyes and to, and to help me to recognize. And many people in the beginning of their tshuva process, of the early steps of coming back to Hashem, they experienced miracles. They went to Uman, to Rabbi Nachman of Westlev's grave in Ukraine, and they had miracles over there, and they saw supervision of Hashem. And they went to the Lubavitcher Rebbe grave, and they saw people over there, and the, the same person that I was thinking about him yesterday, he came today, and all of those wonders and all of those miracles. And after a year or two of serving Hashem, suddenly all the glory and all the passion and the wonders and the miracles are disappearing. And you're asking yourself, where did, did it went, where, what happened, where all those wonders went, went to. So it's very easy again to go and to blame Hashem on that. Hashem, He went. But think to yourself, can it be that in the beginning, when you didn't care so much about Hashem, you were more selfish back then, you were keeping less mitzvot in the beginning, you were doing less, you were learning less, you were less pure, you went less times to the mikveh, you made less time tshuva, confessions in front of the Creator, you, you were less, less, less humble, you, many, many things, you, you, you were not as strong in those things as you are today. So how come the Creator will shine upon you in those days and today He won't? If He is inviting you and calling you to serve Him, so the most logic thing in the world will be that from one day to the next your closeness will, will, will get clearer and your friendship and your relationship will grow and get stronger and you'll see more wonders and you'll have deeper understandings and not only in theory, also, you have more powers, more tools, more abilities, spiritual tools, spiritual powers to create wonders, to wake up other people to do tshuva. And you feel yourself such a disgrace and so low and a broken vessel and so weak and hopeless and worthless. How can it be? So the thing is that the Creator is in the beginning of our journey. He is doing everything that is in His power to show us, to open our eyes on His existence. He is calling us with all of His power from His hidden place. Not because of our darkness, not because that it's hard to call us from those filthiest places of ours, of us. Because the Creator Himself, He is with us in that exile in that darkness. And yes, it's true. It's very hard to understand how can it be that an exile will take place in the life of the Almighty. How can it be that constrictions and sorrow and pain and sadness will take place and part in the life of the Creator that is above this world and supposed to be above nature and is divine and is totally above this world and, and how can it be that all of his godliness cannot shine that light but it's like that as an adult you have the ability to take decisions if you want as an adult you can decide I'm going to live in Israel I'm going to live in United States I'm going to live in Canada in South Africa if you want you can take decisions as an adult you can choose you can travel but from the moment that you gave birth and you have a child in the world, so even though that in power you can take decisions, practically you can't move. <laughs> and you don't. And you're stuck. 
And it's not because you cannot, but the truth is that you're not going to move. Why? Because of your child. So your child, even though that he really cannot stop you, you can leave him over there, but your love to him is tying you to his place and to the responsibility that you have on his life. So the Creator, even though that He is above nature, from that moment that He created the world and brought us down as His children to earth, now He is stuck with us in our place. And He needs to wake us up until we're going to wake up and He's trapped with us in the exile because of His endless love to us. And for a person that doesn't have no understanding about godliness, about the power of the Creator, about the secrets of the Kabbalah, the combinations, the numeral value of the letters, and he doesn't know about the Sfirot, and he doesn't know about the world, and he cannot understand that there is a difference between Nefesh and Ruach and Neshama, and he can't understand all of those concepts, so the Creator when he wants to wake up that person, he needs to wake up him in a way that will touch his senses, that will wake him up. So if he was talking with his wife on deals, on, on, on amazing prices in, on, in, the, in the supermarkets, in the, in, the, in the stores, he needs to see that the Creator is dressing himself in those deals that he will say, hey, I was just looking for that deal and suddenly it's here. I was just telling my wife about that product and here they brought it back to the shelves. The Creator must cover himself in cans of beans and in bottles of sodas and to wake the awareness of his children no matter where they are. And even in the most contaminated places and even when his children desiring sins and crimes, and horrible things, lusts and desires. The Creator must cover Himself with all those husks, all of that filth, and to wake up their souls to understand that there is a Creator, because if He will choose to put Himself in a different place, He can say goodbye to His beloved ones. Because they are now stuck in that filthy place, and they don't have the power to bring themselves up from that filth, so he needs to dress himself in the things that they are wishing to achieve and to show them that there is more to it than the physicality of it. That they can find love in those places, that they can find loyalty in those places, that they can find friendship in those places, that amazing concepts of the Bible, of the Torah, of the divine wisdom of the Almighty is available in His creation, no matter where you are, from which nation you are, and what is the level of your understanding, your wisdom and your life experience, and also your, 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 your mental abilities and your emotional abilities. And the Creator will come down and He is stuck with you in those places and He's doing it and sacrificing His love sacrificing His energy and His purity to be with us in our places. So instead of running and blaming Him on what that He could have done for us, on what that He was supposed to do for us, my way of thinking is to try to understand how me and Him together are going to climb out and fix ourselves and go up from those challenges to the next level and to the next without getting scared from the filth and from the husks and from the darkness that is surrounding us in those places. So now, even if you failed in the worst failure in the world and you're looking at yourself and you can't even stare at yourself in your eyes. You cannot. You're so embarrassed. You feel so ashamed of yourself. You look at the mirror and you want to kill yourself from your shame, from your disgrace. How can it be that I fell to that pit, to that lousy place? How can it be that I found myself drowning in that hell of lusts and desires? How I lost my mind 
instead of judging yourself and hating yourself, and instead of blaming the Creator on separating Himself from you and not helping you, try to understand what is the story of this life situation? What is the message? What can I learn? What was the purpose of my falling, of my failure? What is the lesson that I can learn? What is the point of truth that is shining in that depth, in that darkness? What is the pearl and what is the diamond that I can redeem, that I can take out from my scene, from my situation, from the darkness that is wrapping me right now? And then to hold on to that point of truth and not to leave it ever. And to know that the Creator is with you in that place and that He never left you, and that He is just waking you up and bringing you back to those places that you will collect your losts, that you will redeem the sparks that you lost in different lifetimes, that you will fix everything from head to toe, from bottom to the head to the peak, that you will fix the crown eventually. And for that, you need to have simple faith, Emunah, that Hashem is with you even in the darkest hours of them all and that there is nothing in this creation that can really separate between you two. You and Him are one even if you failed, even if you lost your arms and your legs and your eyes and your heart and your brain and you're lost, you're completely lost. You should know that there is no despair in the world at all. Because all of this world's nature is only to cover and to block the light of truth. So everything that you see with your eyes is only coverings and blockings of the light of infinity. Light of the Creator. And the Creator Himself, because that He loves you so much, He is dressing Himself and covering Himself in your life situations. And He is everything that is surrounding you. And late Atar Panui Mine, there is no place, no zone in the world that is empty from His godliness. And there is nothing except of Him in the universe, in the creation. Think about the creation. I don't know the English concepts, the words. I don't have that vocabulary to use, but I'm, I'm just going to explain it in the most simple way that I can. You have this world, right? We have Earth. This is one star, one, one, one world. Above this one, we have another few stars that we know, that we recognize. We have the moon, we have the sun, and we have... You know the names of them. I know what the galaxies. When you finish all of all of those stars, I know their names in in Hebrew. When you finish though that star system that surrounds and that the sun is the center of that of that sun system, you have more sun systems like those. And when you finish those ones, it beca we call it Shvila Chalav. How you call Shvila Chalav? What? Milky Way. You have that Milky Way. This is one area in space that holds millions of stars in it. When you raise your eyes above that Milky Way, that group of stars, you see that you have millions of units exactly like that. So instead of millions of stars in that Milky Way, you have billions and billions of stars. And if you will climb above that, you will see that all of that is also only one system that holds on millions of systems that built out of millions of stars. And above that, you'll see that you have millions and billions and trillions of systems on systems, and it will never going to end. And then go to the opposite direction. Go to, 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 in this creation, now on earth, go look down, you have earth, you have flowers. Go deep and start investigating the creation, the physicality of creation. Take one cell and break it to pieces. You're going to see that it contains so much inside of it. 
When you divide the cells, you can see millions of particles in every cell and cell, atoms and above atoms. I don't know the names of all of those things. Thank God they kicked me out of school when I was 16 years old. Took my bike and I drove to the north. Couldn't care less. It was fun. <laughs> oh, Hashem. And that's it. You go into the depths of physicality and you see the exact same system that it's endless. In and out, it's endless. Where is the beginning? There is no beginning. Where is the end? There is no end. You cannot investigate the beginning, the first particle of the physical creation. The biggest science is going to tell you that you for sure can break that part that they found that is the tiniest one because the fact that they couldn't break it yet doesn't mean that you cannot break it because 200 years ago they didn't even realize that that cell is exist because they were so ignorant, they were so far from, 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 from the science, the level of modern technology of, of understanding the, 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 the science of today. So you can't understand the depths of creation not to the bottom of it and not to the top of it. And it leaves you only with one understanding, that there is nothing except of the Creator. And He's so great and so above physicality. And He's with you inside your cells. He's giving wisdom to the animals to know how to swim against the stream in certain times of the year and to lay their eggs in different parts of the river. And they know things and they don't have a clue what they're doing. And the Creator is moving them and moving things toward them and separating them one species from the other and moving things in the world. And animals are going after the sun and based on the moon and after the clouds. And things that you cannot understand are happening in front of your eyes. And for you, it's hard to understand how the Creator is not answering your prayers. It's only because that you are self-centered and you're not trying to understand that the Creator never left you. Because you want to achieve something that is impossible for you to achieve as for now, because there are things that are much more important for now, and that is your life journey, and that is the real mission of yours, to go into the depths of your power of understanding and to figure out the real purpose of your life. People can pray for money for years and years. Hashem, give me money. Hashem, I want to buy a house. Hashem, increase my salary. Hashem, I want to have um, money, 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 whatever. And, and the truth is that, that that prayer is not coming from, from the heart because the real prayer that they should pray is, Hashem, I'm scared not to have money. And not Hashem, I want money. So if you're afraid not to have money, you need to say to Hashem, Hashem, I want to solve my fears. I don't want to be afraid anymore. And then you should start discussing your fears. Instead of praying to Hashem, Hashem, I want to get married. Hashem, I want to get married. I want to be married. I want to have a house. Maybe you're going to try to understand why really you have that desire. Why are you so scared to be alone? Maybe start talking with Hashem. Hashem, I'm afraid to be alone. I don't want to grow older alone. And instead of asking to get married, try to solve your emotional problems of being a scared person, terrified person. And then your prayers will be answered. Because if you're asking, Hashem, give me money, Hashem, give me money, and you still don't have the vessels to have money because you're still a scary person and you're terrified, so that fear will make you make mistakes with money and you're not able to hold money. You don't have the vessel yet to hold money. But if you will go to the reason of why Hashem is really holding back the money from you, because Hashem wants to wake you up to the truth, not to ask for money, not to ask to get married. Hashem wants you to understand what are your lackings. Now you broke up, you're separated, you're divorced. Okay, why? Don't ask for another married. Not, don't ask not to separate. Ask Hashem to fix the problem where it starts. 
Why did I brought myself to that place? Why I found myself losing so much in my life? Why I found myself so far from my security? Why I don't have confidence in you, Hashem? And then when you will talk about the truth, about your real fears, and not going to run all of your life plastering your reality and justifying your prayers and, 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 and your fears, and just running and avoiding the truth, trying to blame other people and trying to pray false prayers, prayers that won't be useful for you. You can make one million dollars and to lose that amount in a year and then you'll be stuck and you'll have another frustration and another reason to, to fight with your, with, your, with your mate only because you lost another million dollars. So you're going to receive a million dollars and you think that it's going to build you but one million dollars can destroy you faster than not to have them and to stay humble. There are many things that the Creator, He understands about our lives that we don't understand. And we're thinking that we're so wise and if I would have another five hundred dollars a month, if I would have another two thousand dollars a month, you don't know what those two thousand dollars would do to you. They could destroy your life in a way that is so dangerous that you won't have the ability to recover from it because it's gonna give you the power really to avoid your real lackings things that today you are forced because of your poverty because of the struggles because of your failures you're forced to deal with those weaknesses of yours you must see with your eyes that you are weak that you're not able to support your family, that you cannot buy a house, that you don't have a solution to those problems, that you don't know what to do with yourself. And now, because that you see those things with your eyes, it's going to force you to work on your real weaknesses, on your defects, and to fix yourself from the beginning, from the roots of your problems. But if you'll have another $2,000, so every fight in the house, you're going to book another plane ticket to Miami and you're gonna fly and you're gonna rent uh, the most expensive hotels and you and every argument you're gonna buy another ring and another necklace and another head cover and another gift and another flower bouquet and then you're gonna think that you're fixing your problems but in two three years suddenly the explosion that's gonna take place in your life will be so domestic and so horrible that you won't be able to fix it ever. So it's better to be humble and to work on your weaknesses and to fix them from the beginning of them and to accept your condition with healthy eyes that are connected to reality and to discuss reality with the Creator and to speak with Him about your life challenges and your issues and your dark spots and to fix them with Him to talk to Him about your issues and not to try to avoid them and not to try to run away from your problems. There is no greater happiness than the happiness of healing your spirit. When you're honest and you're talking from your heart and you're sharing and you have a person that you can talk to or that you can talk about your issues with the Creator and you explain your heart to the Creator and you tell him I'm scared I don't know what to do I need your guidance I need your support feed me heal me support me stabilize me give me the stability that's so required help me save me when you say those words immediately you have a feeling of relief. You feel that at least you were honest, at least you were straight, at least you were expressing your heart. You were that person that is really you. You were able to share and to talk about your life issues. And that brings you to deep, deep happiness. It heals you from inside. No vacation in five stars hotel will give you that happiness, I promise you. We all been to many fantastic places. We were standing in front, amazing views. It doesn't leave you with anything. You don't take anything from those life experiences except of frustration. Why I cannot go back to those places? Why I cannot be there again? Why I don't have the budget to have another vacation in the... 
it's only temporary satisfaction. It doesn't give you the completion of building your spirit from A to Z, from the beginning. This is something that you can do only when you understand that you and the Creator are in it to win it, are in that problem together. He's not over there and you're over here. You're not stuck and you need to call Him. Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. When you speak the truth, Hashem is close to you. He's not over there anymore. When you're lying to yourself, He's over there. But when you're saying the truth, He's over here. He's that one that is giving you those prayers. When you're talking about your issues, there is a reason for you to pray. What's the reason? Why the Creator is putting those prayers in your mouth? If not, that you will be answered. Hashem is putting those prayers in your mouth for a reason. How come you woke up to pray? Why you have them married from heaven? Why they're calling you to pray if not because that they want you to be answered? Now you have a child, you try to educate him, you tell him, say thank you. What do you tell mommy after she gives you? What do you tell father after he gives you? What do you say? You need to say so sorry, you need to say thank you. you need... Why, why, why you teach that? Because you need those thanks, you need those praises, you need him to apologize to you. No. You just want him to understand the way of the land. You want him to be educated. You want him to find the wisdom that is behind the, the, the actions. That he will understand that you don't just give. You give and you say thank you because you need to have appreciation. You need to have gratitude. That's the intention that is behind the action. So also the Creator. When He's bringing us to certain situations in our life, we must understand that there is an intention to it. We need to have gratitude. We need to have appreciation. We need to understand that He is with us. That He is with us even in the most impure places of them all. Don't think to yourself for one moment that you are separated from Him. You are not. It's only the illusion of this world that is blocking our eyes from seeing the truth. That the godliness is hovering above all. That He is inside all. That He is everything. And that there is nothing except of Him. And that He lives inside of our bodies. That the strongest and most powerful way to connect Him is to connect Him from our inside. Not to go nowhere. Not to go to no other inspiring places and to think, oh, over there I'm going to find Hashem. I'm going to find Hashem in the synagogue. I'm going to find Hashem in the books. I'm going to find Hashem in the Beit Midrash. I'm going to find Hashem in Jerusalem. I'm going to find Hashem in front of the Western Wall. I'm sorry. It won't be the answer of your questions. The answer of your questions is an inner answer. That the Creator is with you. Maybe you need to go all the way to Jerusalem to realize that Hashem is with you. Great, go. Go to the Far East, go to Jerusalem, go wherever you go. Take Hashem with you. Take Hashem in your mind with you. When you go up, when you go down, when you succeed, when you fall, when you fail, when you destroy, when you've been destroyed, always remind yourself of Hashem's existence with you. That you and Him are one unit that cannot be separate. You are one. Nothing can break that endless love between you. Except of the power of imagination that will tell you that you are separated. But it won't really separate you. It's just going to block your vision. It's just going to block your mind from thinking. It's just going to distract your thoughts to think about foreign things, negative thoughts, bad thoughts, impure thoughts. Those are the impure thoughts that are telling you that you are separated from the one. You're not. You and Him are one. In the nature of your creation, He blow His Spirit into your body. 
And all of this creation is only coverings of His godliness. And it's all coverings of Him. Like the Zohar Kadosh is saying, Malbushin Dileh, His coverings. Those are His coverings. Means that it's all Him in different faces, from different angles, different shapes, different weights, different colors, different smells, different weights, different, different cells, different combinations. It's all Him. And you are Him as well. And the way to know it, it's to know yourself. You want to know Hashem? You should know yourself. Because until you're not going to know yourself, if you don't know yourself, you cannot know Him. Because He is you. And you're Him. And it doesn't make you to be God that you now can go and decree things in the world. It makes you humble. To understand the greatness and the glory of the Creator that He lives inside of you and that you live by the gift of His grace and His kindness and endless love. O oh, Father of mercy to His children, to His creations, and His mercy and His kindness is on all of His creations to build them all to strengthen them all, to feed them all, to nurture them all, to make them all grow spiritually and emotionally, and to heal us from our foundations. So if you think that you should do something in the heights, it's only because you don't understand the relocations of diamonds, golds, and pearls and in the depths of the ground undercovered. You want to fix yourself? Fix yourself. Don't go to Mikubalim, to giant rabbis that are going to tell you secrets, that are going to tell you the roots of your souls. Drop that. It's not what you need. You need to work on your honesty. You need to work on your attributes. You need to be nice to yourself. You need to ask yourself, what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to achieve? Who I want to be? Do I want to be nice? Do I want to be friendly? Do I want to have a relationship with that person? Do I really want? And if yes, so why? Because I love him or because I'm afraid of him? And if I think that I love him, so why do I love him? And if I'm afraid of him, so why do I afraid of him? And maybe there is more to it than my eye can see. Maybe in the end you're going to understand that your worst enemy is your best friend, and that the one that you desire and that you love so much is your worst enemy and worse than him. Only with an honest investigation of your own thoughts, not being a genius and opening books of Zohar and Kabbalah and Kitve Arizal and Marchu, Rabbi Chaim Vital. No. When you get to those places, okay, call me. I would love to hear from you. But as for now, you still have the scale of truth. It's your conscience. It's your senses. It's your emotions. It's your thoughts. You know what is right and what is wrong. It's wrong to steal. It's wrong to lie. It's wrong to hide. It's good to give. It's nice to have and to share and to support and to care. What did you love to receive for yourself? That's exactly what did you need to see how to give and to share to other people and to work with your abilities, with your life wisdom, with your life experience, and to grow and to develop from who that you are to who that you're going to be tomorrow. And not to jump from A to Z. Just to climb from A to B and from B to C and from C to D. And slowly, slowly, you're going to achieve what that you need to achieve. And you will become that person that you've been sent to be. You will fulfill the mission and the purpose of your creation <clears throat> by being honest. And you're not missing anything if you're not running in the heights and climbing above challenges. Deal with life challenges. Break them and fix them one after the next. Deal with your emotional issues. Be honest with yourself. 
Tell yourself the truth about that relationship. Discuss it with yourself. Why am I keeping it? Why do I want it? What am I doing to preserve it? Should I? Shouldn't I? And if so, so why? And to go all the way with that investigation until you will reach the real reason of that scene in your life. What is the real reason of our relationship? What is the real purpose of our connection? What is the real reason of our arguments, of my commitment to that person or to that job? What's the truth about it? When you will find your truth, you will find Hashem's godliness in that place. Hashem is everything. And to connect Him is only through truth. Which truth? The divine truth? Your truth. Your truth. Be truthful. And then you will, sp you, you, you will spend your life with Hashem. When you will just use the tools of truth and love and honor and respect that He planted and treasured inside of you. Just be who that you are. Use your skills, your abilities. Open yourself a little bit more today. Be a little bit more honest. How crazy it is that I'm the only person in the world that is speaking like that. Can you tell me how can it be? Maybe I hope that there are more people that are talking like that. I hope, I beg to Hashem to let me know those people. Everyone that are talking about things that are not from the foundations of your creation, those are the things that are the most painful. You're breaking your head to the wall. Why am I fighting with my wife? Why my parents are abusing me? Why am I hating my siblings? Why I cannot stand my, my children? Why I want to break that? Those are your problems. So you don't have anything to go to, go, to, go to, to, to other places. You need to connect yourself to honesty. I hope you understand my bent and twisted English. I'm translating my Hebrew thoughts to your language that you'll get something. Those are the real problems that we have. Our life challenges, those are the real problems that we have. So we must deal with them. It cannot be that we need to leave it all behind us and to go and to be Avrichim, learning Torah in Yeshiva, in Jerusalem, and that's going to be the solution for all of us. It's not. Your parents are going to stay the same parents, your family going to stay the same, your, your, your confidence, your fears, your, your, your patterns, your negative thoughts, your, your sadnesses, your bad habits, the fact that you run and drink alcohol. And all of those things are going to, going to go with you to Jerusalem. You're going to drink in the, in, in the Mir Yeshiva. Like, like... I saw one person once that is drinking close to the Mir Yeshiva. You don't want to drink like him. Watch over your, your truth. Be who that you are. And now, you hear me, I'm talking about those concepts because I realize that to run in the clouds won't bring me nowhere. I need to deal with my fears. I need to deal with my stress, with my angers, with my issues, with my lack of confidence. And if I won't do it, I, so what, what is my greatness? If I haven't solved my, 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 my problems from my childhood, if I haven't overpowered my fears, if I haven't passed my challenges, if I'm not able to respect my family and to love my friends and to appreciate my parents, so who am I? What am I? Nothing. The beginning is to work on those small things and to fix them. So this is why I'm saying about myself that you will understand that you don't need to be somewhere else to go and share your life wisdom. Because exactly like that I'm talking about life situations, this is something that you can do as well. Your best friends are those friends that you're able to share your emotions with. So go and share with them. Go talk with them about those important things. Go spread this message. And not that message and that understanding and all of the, the theories. We'll get to that, hopefully, one day.
if we'll have time. But as for now, the real problems that we have are in our guts, in our hearts, in our lungs, in our backs, in our feet, in our hands, in our eyes, in our ears, things that we hear, things that we see, things that we feel, things that we sense, things that we're afraid of. We need to deal with that. And every one of you have that power to go out to the world and to talk about those things. You don't need to be a qualified rabbi. You don't need to be a genius. You don't need to finish Shas for that. You don't need to, to finish all the Zara Kadosh before you will be able to talk about loyalty and about dignity and about love and about kindness. Those are things that need to be discussed with honesty and with trust and with a happy heart and a wishing soul to do as much good as we can in the world. And every one of us got the power to change the world, to make huge changes. You don't know which situations Hashem will bring to your table, to your life. Sunday you're going to speak to one person that he will go and break out and make changes and you inspired him. You, that small person, you were sitting with him in that diner and you brought that flame into his heart. You don't know. And he will make changes. And you can be that one to make those changes as well. By being who that you are. Talking with honesty. Words of truth are penetrating into the heart of the one that listens to them. Speak the truth. Your truth. The truth of your heart and then your words will be he heard and answered and all your prayers as well thank you very much thank you mm -hmm. emuna project we're a non-profit organization we're making big changes in the world today i saw that uh, one of my videos reached 57,000 views only on YouTube. And it's an amazing number for me. 57,000 views on one video, it's only on YouTube. The, it's, a, it's a huge, huge thing for me. And um, so I asked a friend of mine today, why do you think that that video catched so, so well? So he told me that uh, he said, people love to hear your truth. So I told him, it's not my truth. It's the truth. <laughs> it's not mine. I was just sharing it. People love the truth. People love to hear the truth. So I'm, I'm calling you and asking you to go and spread the words of truth in the world and help us also to reach out to all of those thousands of people that we're reaching them on a daily basis. Thank Hashem. And may Hashem bless you and answer quickly to all of your prayers and requests. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.